We won't sing for him. Oh no, he's a he's a wicked man. Turn over to Isaiah. I think we want to go to Isaiah. No, let's do this. Let's go to Proverbs 10.25, first of all. I wrote these scriptures down. Because I want to talk about the whirlwind. The Bible doesn't talk about a tornado, but I tell you what, whirlwind fits the category of a tornado. And Hosea the prophet said, if you sow to the wind, you're going to reap the whirlwind. And this is what it says in Proverbs 10.25. It says, when the whirlwind passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Another passage regarding whirlwind. Let's go to Proverbs 1. Oh, I tell you, it's in the Bible. I didn't write it. Don't get upset with me as we go to verse 26. I didn't write it. How do you... Oh, isn't that terrible? Oh, this destruction of all these tornadoes are going across the land. And somebody said, well, we've always had tornadoes, you know, I think it's always been. It. We have had more tornadoes. I think the average is, if I remember, don't quote me exactly, for years, about 300 some. We're not. Twice as many this year. Nope. Three times as many this year. Three times as many this year, and we're not even all the way through the year. Now, we say, isn't it terrible? How does God feel about it? How does God feel about the whirlwind that hits a land that has mocked him, mocked his law, and thought they could get by and not answer to God for all this filth and sin that we've allowed this Talmudic Hollywood to flush into your minds right there between your temples? They sit there. Well, this is what it says. I didn't write it, so don't get upset with me. I will even laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes. When your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes on like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come on you. Well, that's not the way my God is. I know it. You better start following the God of the Bible. And it's about time there be a little bit of fear of God being preached right along with repentance. Amen? Amen. There was a man that did a study, wrote a book. One of my acres of diamond men were telling me about it just last weekend. In fact, he wrote it down, but about life after death experiences. And he did a, a long research, and so many of them talk about the same thing, about seeing a light, actually seeing Christ. You've heard these things, haven't you? But what you don't hear, and they make sure you don't hear, were some of them that really puzzled him. And they said it was horrible, that they were in utter darkness, and they were completely alone. There was nothing around them. They were conscious that they were there. They could move, but it was, it was terrifying because it was such a darkness and an emptiness. That's where they were at. You ever hear about those life after death experiences? Well, you'll read about it in the Bible when Jesus warns about being cast off into the utter darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I didn't write it. Jesus told us, and it's written down in the Bible. Is it preached today? It used to be preached called hellfire and brimstone preaching. But, oh, you're, you're just a hater. You know, I think it's just terrible, those people. I think it's a good thing that, that, that they don't sing for those people. I think it's a good thing they discriminate against those people. Those people that have the audacity to stand up and sing, Jesus loves me. Isn't it horrible? I want to tell some of you people out there, because I sense it in my spirit, you've joined me. You better pray to God that I'm not a man of God. I want you to hear me. You'd better pray to God that I'm not a man of God. Because there has been persecution leveled against this preacher and against singers that have sung for us and slander and lies spoken about us. And the Lord said, do my prophets no harm. I didn't write it. Amen. Now, you better pray that I'm not a man of God because I want to tell you something. I have, as a man of God, prayed for you, you lying slanders out there. We're at war. 
We are at war, and the Bible that's why the Bible talks about putting on the armor of God and holding up the shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the evil one. If you do a Bible study at all, you'll find out that the lies and slander that people throw at you are the fiery darts. And it's meant to make you bitter. It's meant to bring you down. It's meant to destroy your ministry. You better pray I'm not a man of God because I've prayed. Uh, no, I didn't say, Jesus, forgive them. They know not what they do because you know full well what you're doing, some of you snakes out there. Paul was a man of God and he talked about Onesiphorus. Is that his name? That the, the metal smith, the silversmith? that had done him wrong, he said, may God pay him back. You better pray I'm not a man of God because I want you to know something. I pray for you. And we grabbed a bunch of men together even yesterday and we prayed against those that have come against us in slander. And I've taken a lot more persecution than that, let me tell you. And the, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, all ye that choose to live godly shall suffer what? Persecution. Now, I hesitate to call it persecution. It's so minor anymore. But we received a little bit of it when we were out there because there got to be a telephone grapevine calling thing. Let, I'll get to that, but let me get back to this thing on the whirlwind. I'm saying it because I want you to know that the Bible teaches that there is such a thing as an angry God. The Bible teaches, I don't understand this whole concept of hell, but I know this. i got enough sense to know that it's a hell of a place. And some of you better learn to fear God again. Amen? And I want to say this. I feel spirit-led. Some of you that are watching TV, when I go on the road like that, I'm in a motel room, I can click the TV on, I'm aghast at what's on TV. And if you want to keep your lives pure, you better watch what's going into your ears with regards to music and what's going into your eyes from this place called Hollywood. And there's way too many eyes that are glued on TVs today and they're going to keep you out of the kingdom of God. And that's what they're intending to do. Can you receive that? I hope you can. I'm telling you. you they might not tell you that, but I'm telling you. And I'm telling you this, that the events that are going on now, these Day of the Lord events... They are events prior to the release from the Egyptian captivity that we're in. I want to go over to Psalms, chapter 66. In Psalm 66, and I'm still on this thing of whirlwind, verse 14 is where we'll begin. It talks about the Lord and His chariots of whirlwind. We read, Is this... Uh, uh, excuse me, let's go to I, oh, sorry, Isaiah 66. I said Psalms. I do apologize for that. I'd like to blame that on Richard, but I don't think I can get by and convince anybody that it was his fault. So we'll go to uh, Isaiah 66, starting with verse 14. Then you shall see this, and your heart shall be glad, and your bones shall flourish, like the new grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be made known to his servants. But he shall be indignant towards his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come in fire, and his chariots like the whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For the Lord will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh, and those slain by the Lord will be many. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens, falling one in the center, who eat swine's flesh, detestable things, and mice, shall come to an end altogether, declares the Lord. Let's go over to Psalm 77. And there we go to verse 14. Psalm 77, 14. Thou art the God who worketh wonders. Thou hast made known thy strength among the peoples. Thou hast by thy power redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were in anguish. The deeps also trembled. The clouds poured out water. 
The skies gave forth a sound. Thy arrows flashed here and there. The sound of thy thunder was in the 